Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Cape Girardeau, located in Cape Girardeau County, Missouri, on the 26th of April, 1863. For most of the early part of 1863, Union forces had been conducting operations within Missouri without concern of retribution by the Confederate Army. By April, though, Confederate command had ordered Confederate General John S. Marmaduke to slow down and stop those operations if at all possible. Marmaduke did this by chasing Union Brigadier General John McNeil from Bloomfield. McNeil attempted to escape by retreating back to the Union fortifications at Cape Girardeau. This was fortified by the Union with four forts because it was an important supply depot in the Mississippi River. This didn't slow down General Marmaduke at all as he pursued McNeil right up to the fort. McNeil knew there would be a fight and ordered all women and children to evacuate via steamboat upriver to a safe location. Marmaduke saw this and believed that indicated a sign of weakness or at least the belief by the Union that they couldn't win. This buoyed Marmaduke into feeling confident enough that on April 26, he demanded McNeil to surrender to him. Unfortunately for him, McNeil said no. Marmaduke then ordered Confederate Colonel Joseph O. Joe Shelby and his Iron Brigade, members of the 4th Missouri Cavalry, to determine the defenses of the Union forts. Shelby started with showing off his force, flexing with the reputation, and attempting to intimidate the Union. But when he didn't get the response he wanted, it devolved into an actual attack on the Union defenses. The Union troops and the fortifications had very little problems defeating Shelby and his men, and the losses were 30 times more for the Confederates. Realizing his position was precarious, Marmaduke prepared for another attack when he received word that Union reinforcements were on their way. Realizing the position he was in, Marmaduke ordered his men to ride to Arkansas as quickly as possible to escape the Union troops coming. Casualties for the Union were light, with only 12 Union soldiers killed, wounded, or missing, while the Confederates lost significantly more, with 325 killed, wounded, missing, or captured. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.